Welcome to the Fat Jack Sports Hour. If you are a sports better, this is the most important hour of your day because the number one sports consultant in America has brought his national radio show and podcast here to YouTube. So while you're here, go ahead and like and subscribe or download the podcast and listen on your schedule. And now, here is our host, the number one sports consultant in America, ready to make you money this week and every week, the Fat Jack. Hello and welcome to the Fat Jack Sports Hour. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm your host, the Fat Jack. The weekend is here. November is here. We may even be falling back this week. I'll ask Brandon here in a minute. We'll get that out of the way. But I I don't even know that I care. We're having such a good run right now. Everybody's winning. The Breeders' Cup is Saturday. College basketball starts next week. Are you ready to start making some money? Let me bring in my co-host to get this show underway and get you into some profit. Mr. Brandon Rush, how are you today? I am good, and I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but yes, we do lose an hour of sunlight this weekend. But when the picks go 9-2 and two like they did last weekend in football, no one cares. No, you're right. Do they do they celebrate this? Or do they do this overseas, or is this an American thing? Because I'm going to be in... Yeah, this is a very American thing, and luckily, uh, this is the last time ever, ever, Jack, that we fall back. Oh, thank God. Did they pass that already? Is that passed? They they have passed that, and yeah, when we we will fall back this year, we will spring forward again in the spring, and then we will permanently stay in that one-hour quantum leap time lapse ahead of of spring. So this year year will, will be the last time we have to do this. Brandon, people say that complaining does not work. And and just generally bitching does not pay the bills. Right, it does right. not work. I, I I beg to differ. <laughs> I have once in a while. Yeah, I've been complaining about no college playoff system since I was eight. Yep. Since I realized what a playoff was. Look what we have now, a playoff that's going into more playoffs. I was I've been complaining about daylight savings time since I was about eleven and realized that I need more sun than the world was giving me here in Oklahoma. And look what's happening, Brandon. Yeah. I, so you get kids. Complain all you want because you never know what's going to change in your lifetime. Go to your parents, say the complaining doesn't work. Point out the college playoff system and the fact that we are getting ready to not have to fall back anymore in November, which is great news for me. Um, I'm not sure who it's bad news for. Maybe some farmers or something, but I, mm-hmm. I, I will re- I will welcome the extra sunlight in the evening. And I also, as you mentioned, and welcoming all of the profit going into our accounts right now. My gosh, what a great run last week. Four and one on Sunday, five, one and one on Saturday. Everybody won. Uh, we hit game two of the World Series, mm-hmm. college football won, NBA won on Saturday. Everybody's winning. If you're not signed, I just got an email from a guy. I just, you know, this time of year when I get emails from people, they, I know immediately whether you're a loser or not. <laughs> Jeez. By one email. I've tried your service. Not any good. Take me off your list. What does that mean? Has that person has that person done sign up for a weekend back in 2004? I don't know how to even respond. There's no way to respond to that. Not be rude to that dude, no, especially after a nine and two. Yeah, I don't know if if he didn't play the picks this last weekend or only play. I yeah, I don't see yes, how sir. you could play anywhere in the last three months and be unhappy with the way things are going. He has not been a client in three months, or she, whoever this person is we'll call her nikki or him nikki because that's their name um but basically yeah at some point in the history of the life they signed up for the service it didn't win as much as they want and they decided this guy must be that all the time guys if you want to win at the very minimum go to fatjacksports.com and apply some common sense are the games posted does everybody get the same plays how does he charge how do i get the picks all of those things matter. I, I, My site allows you to apply common sense. What you're going to find when you go there is that everybody pays the same price for the picks. I don't ever say how much do you bet per game and try to take more from you based on how much you're betting or not betting. That's one. Number two, everybody gets exactly the same plays. You know that because you go to the results tab and every play is posted there. The exact plays you're getting if you're signed up. So you're able to see that not only did I get these plays, here they are, they're posted, they're documented, and I can go back five, six, seven years and see all the plays that he's had. People say, well, I want to try it. You don't need to try it. Whether I win or lose one weekend is going to have nothing to do with how you do over the course of your gambling career. If you sign up long-term, you're going to win. If you don't, you might win. 
So go to FatJackSports.com, and I encourage you, first and foremost, apply some common sense because that is uh, the, the one of the things. That's the kryptonite to other services. I have people this time of year, including this last week, that all said, you know, Jack, I was taken by some other guy, or he promised me this, took a bunch of – and then they sign up for me. They finally say, well, I'm done. I'm going to sign up for you, and we'll see how it goes. And they were rewarded with 9-2 and two over the course of the weekend. Everybody get in the same place. They're allowed to add some discipline to their gambling. And most importantly, they've turned the corner, and now they're winning. I always tell people, it took you a month or two to get into the hole you're in. Give me more than a day or a week. Now, if you sign up last week, you are off and running. You're going the right direction. You're going to be building profit with college basketball going, or excuse me, college football going every day this week. There's football for the next, what is it, 25, 27 days, something like that, Brandon? Yeah, there's football on every day until the Wednesday before Thanksgiving. So we're in the next three weeks easily. Yeah, so 21 days or so, you're going to get games every single day. That you're going to be building profit, so you're going to probably get out of your debt, even if you wager responsibly, which is always what we're going to recommend. You're going to get out of it quicker than it took you to get into it, but if it took you two months of bad decisions, give me at least a month or so to uh, show you that you can make money doing this, and then get signed up for a longer package because, most importantly, that lowers your price per pick, lowers your price per week because you play less for the longer packages. That's going to get you into profit quicker. College basketball starts on, what, Tuesday? And the Breeders' Cup is this Saturday, and those plays are free if you sign up for a football and or combo package. Mm. You just want the Breeders' Cup, go to the package page, scroll to the bottom. You'll see $100 for all the, the Breeders' Cup plays for Saturday. You can get that. Go get into profit that way. But most importantly, do not continue losing on your own. Go to FatJackSports.com, sign up today, and win this weekend. Brandon, what happened uh, last week that caught your eye? What do you think? It was a very entertaining uh, weekend of games. The uh, the NFL continues to uh, to just deliver week in and week out. Um, the I mean, so there's some games that were absolutely mind boggling. The Carolina Panthers. Who are these Panthers? I mean, this is a team that was garbage the first six weeks of the season. Matt Rule gets fired, and all of a sudden they're a tough out. They get that hail mary at the at the buzzer to force overtime, and then obviously give it away in overtime. But I mean, they still find a way to win games and the new england patriots hello out of out of uh, abyss that they get they get their their tails kicked a week ago turn around and win a, a road game against a jets team that a lot of people myself included were starting to think okay maybe they've got something here yeah um and i've been saying for three or four weeks this what this last week was a culmination of a lot of the season long speculations i've been making mm -hmm. that the jets and the giants were overrated you know i go mm -hmm. on with anita marks who does a lot of ESPN stuff on New York and L.A., and they have not loved my information <laughs> on their New York teams or the L.A. teams because I basically said that your teams are pretenders, especially in the NFL. I, I don't want to do that. It's not like I, I you, you know, don't enjoy get satisfaction in, in saying, hey, your team stink. No, it's best when I'm able to go on and say, yeah, I love your play. People in Knoxville think I'm, you know, they, they love me right now <laughs> because I've been saying for four years this was coming. We'll see if they love you this weekend. No, exactly. There's a big one coming up. We'll talk about that after the break for sure. Um, but, yeah, the they, they love the information I've been giving. But New York was clearly overrated based on their schedule, based on their lack of, of – productivity offensively for sure and kind of how they were winning um and and so I, that there was a culmination of a lot of that played against the Giants. we had new england played against the giants um we had those winners we had total winners in those games and so and by the way i said for a month that oklahoma state was also mm. overrated mm. now i didn't think they were going to be 49 to nothing but when you give up over six and a half yards for per, per play against a team that wants to run it 40 or 50 times, then you're going to have some trouble if you're still giving up six or seven yards per play because it'll be hard to get the ball back. So great time to get signed up, great time to start winning. And, yeah, if you're if you're a guy playing the public plays or playing what you saw the week before, then you had to come back down to reality. We certainly didn't have that. I, I was interested by not only the fact that we had a team like Tennessee – that went and kind of pronounced their big win. You know, they had the win against Alabama. Now they go mm -hmm. on the road after, a you know, they played a high school team basically the week after. But they they win at Kentucky or win against Kentucky as a 12-point favorite, and they, they were really dominant in that game. This Kentucky team, I am excited to see how good they actually are. 
They get Georgia this week, as we know. And this uh, they're all important. But I will encourage people this, that if nationally, and you know, I'm not on any committees or anything, but I would like for teams like Tennessee to get exactly the same respect if they lose at Georgia that we seem to give Alabama every single year. Rather, no matter what they're doing, their their style points. We only talk about style points mm-hmm. when it comes to teams that are trying to get in the conversation. We never talk about style points when it comes to Alabama or Georgia or Ohio State. Those should matter the same. And the reality is, Alabama, and, and a lot of people will be listening on Sunday. And you, this may not even matter, but the reality is, Alabama could have lost a And M. Should or was it a And M? Yeah, should have lost. Could have lost a And M. Should have lost to Texas. Yep. Did lose to Tennessee. There's no style points in what Alabama's doing. So all I'm saying is that if Tennessee goes and loses at Georgia, that they should still be ranked ahead of Alabama on everybody's card as far as I'm concerned. Yes. Because, yeah, you could say, well, Alabama had to go play at Tennessee. Yeah, they did. But the other games, these other style points that, that the, the committee seems to always care about and look at, they're not there for Alabama this year, at least yet. And they are there for Tennessee. And going and losing to the defending national champions on their home field, I don't think is a a big knock to them. I still would put them in the top four. What about the teams outside the the SEC, Brandon? Who who, uh, who do you think – I asked, got asked this a lot last week. Mm-hmm. Who do you think is uh, the best team to try to overthrow the SEC as far as winning? And, frankly, who's going to get in? I mean, Ohio State's, if healthy – is probably going to be the the team that will will get the most attention from there. Um, that said, it, it's hard to look past Michigan. It's hard to look past uh, eh, maybe TCU, but I, I then that's that's scraping the barrel for for teams that that might be in that conversation. I don't believe that Clemson, even though they are eight and zero and and have done everything asked of them so far, is is better than say like a, a TCU maybe. I feel dirty saying this, maybe Oregon, the way they're playing lately. But that's that's a I think a bigger gap between um behind um TCU than say TCU is behind Ohio State and Michigan. Yeah, and the the answer is there is there's no comparison. Sure. It's the SC it's the SEC and everybody else. It's sure. Groundhog Day. Those of you who know what Groundhog Day, go watch the movie Groundhog Day. It's Groundhog Day. It's Bill basically Murray, it's Bill Murray, yes, sir. It's basically the same stuff, different year. Mm-hmm. That's what we have going right now. We do not have a team outside the SEC. And actually, don't look now, we have three teams that are probably favorites in Las Vegas's eyes and certainly favorites to win over anybody else, in my opinion, including Ohio State and Michigan. And this show runs all over that part of the country. And I hate to say it, but it's the truth. Um, now, we'll see. A lot of things will play out. You're going to get the winner of Ohio State-Michigan in the uh, in the playoff. And so assuming they'll get they the Big Ten championship game. What's that? I said, assuming they win the Big Ten championship game and don't lay an egg against somebody like Illinois. It, and you know what Illinois know, there you want to talk about a hard out. Mm-hmm. I mean, number one ranked defense in the country. We released um, Illinois last week, and they are just – that typical old school Big Ten. The problem with them is what a lot of those quote unquote typical old school Big Ten teams run into is that they can't score if they do give up points. And that secondary for Illinois is next level good. They're very, very good. But most of the teams we're talking about them competing against are either going to be better offensively, their receivers versus the secondary in what Tennessee would be, or you're going to get more balance out of an Alabama or Georgia or frankly, even Ohio State or Michigan. Uh, State for sure, maybe Michigan. That yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't, I don't, I don't see don't. them laying an egg. But you're right. If that happens, it muddies things up even more. And then we get into the politics of it. It's another reason why mm-hmm. we need 16 teams to playoff. So go to FatJackSports.com if you don't want to have to worry about this stuff. Go get signed up today. We were nine and two last week with the football selections during the weekend. Five and one on Saturday. Four and one on Sunday. We're going to start November the exact same way that we ended October. We're deep, deep into profit. Clients getting all the plays are all winning money. And you could sign up for less than $100 a week when you even go just through November. So give yourself a month to start di- building profit, seeing things uh, growing in your account. And then you're going to sign up for something longer, and that's going to make you even more money. So 
stop waiting, stop uh, looking around and wondering what you're going to do or thinking about quitting or whatever. If you're going to quit, quit. If you're not going to quit, go to fatjacksports.com and get signed up. Uh, it's one or the other. Either quit. Not up, not up or shut up. That's right. It's one of the two. Figure it out. But let's quit looking in the mirror and say, you know what? This week will be different. I really yeah. like OU this week or whoever it is you like. Nobody cares who you like, including you. Because if you did, you'd be winning, but you're not. So like whoever you want, bet on the teams that are going to make you money. That's what I'm going to be able to help you do. So go to FatJackSports.com and get signed up today. I'm heading to Munich, Germany this weekend. Yeah, NFL uh, games in Germany yet again. So this will be a uh, another trip for uh, for you abroad. I have you, have you ever been to Germany? I went to. We talked about this a few weeks ago. I laid over in the airport That's right. That's in right. Ger- in Germany. I turned on the TV. They kept showing like antique road show, and mm-hmm. I felt dirty. Mm-hmm. I told Karen we can't watch this show. That's right. It's too soon. It's antique road show. This woman comes out with a you know a sterling silver platter set. So I found this in my great grandmother's barn outside by the sheep, and I kept thinking she's going to turn it over and say property of Anne Frank on the bottom or something. I mean, it's just too soon. So, and every channel is that Europe in general loves an antique road show. They love fine trash to treasure, all those type of things. They love that stuff, which I'm okay with unless I'm in Germany. I don't expect to like anything about Germany. I hope I'm wrong. I'm doing some taping for the show. I love watching the NFL outside the country. That's a lot of fun. Um, I've got Leland Hosen, Leader Hosen, whatever they're called. Mm-hmm. I'm going to do that. We're going to go, we're going to immerse ourselves in the German um, way of life. So definitely tune in to beat the odds around the country. Check local listings. Follow us on Twitter at Fatjack Sports uh, for times and stuff. So it's going to be a lot of fun, but I don't know that I could pick other places besides Germany I'd want to go. It's cold there too. I hate cold unless I'm skiing. But I mean, you get to see Tom Brady, a, a newly single Tom Brady. I'm going to try to get him a girlfriend while I'm there. That's one of the things I'm going to do. Is go around Munich and see if I can, you know, make a love connection. I mean, if anybody I trust to, uh, to for with my love life, if if I had one, um, would would be you. I would definitely let you set me up on a, on a few blind dates. Well, how about just a rebound? I'm not saying he has to get married to. No, him, no, definitely. But I mean, uh, he's definitely in the mood for a rebound. He's in the area. I'm in the area. Let's make so, it happen. Let's make it happen, Captain. I'm going to figure it out while I'm there. So to tune in on the different uh, channels and stuff because I'm definitely – that's one of the things I'm doing. I'm going to find Tom Brady at least a rebound. Hopefully, uh, you know, a love for life. I mean, that's what I'm here for, Brandon. I think so, you should do a man-on-the-street type deal with a with a 8 by 10 of Tom Brady. Color, obviously. You don't want black and white. Uh, but then just just pose the question to random people. Be like, hey, would you would you be interested in dating this man? He's He's rich. He's highly successful. And uh, might be the greatest at his at his profession of all time. A, do you know who he is? And B, would you date him? Yeah, or I could definitely do. And I'm thinking maybe come into America type deal. Hold up the picture. <laughs> Don't tell him who he is. <laughs> and say, well, you, you give this guy a shot. I mean, let's see if Tom Brady. Well, this might be a great social experience. If Tom Brady wasn't Tom Brady, mm-hmm. who would he actually be in the? You always talk to people about if you're a five, and you. I know we gotta get to break, but if you're a five and you're dating a nine, and I see you in public. I immediately know that the girl or guy you're with is a lunatic because there's no fives dating nines unless the nine, who's typically a girl when I'm looking, I got these fives walking around with comb overs and stuff. Mm-hmm. They're dating some hot chick, some nine. And I immediately looked and I say to myself, that woman's crazy. She might be a gold digger if he is rich. Otherwise, she's just bat, you know what, crazy because... Yep. You don't get a nine if you're a five unless there's some flaws, and vice versa. I'm not. I'm listen. I don't make the rules. These are just the rules. Everybody I've ever met that is dating somebody. That's one thing that's great about you, Brandon. You've you've got somebody that's right where you know, right in your wheelhouse. You right. actually you actually outkick your coverage for sure. Jamie's a lot hotter than you. Yes, oh for sure. But but when you get to know her, you realize this is a this woman is. A great, sound person, very sweet. Right. Uh, all those, you know exactly what you're getting. The more Jamie's, well, most people, including me, the more you get to know him, the less you like him. I think. <laughs> Jamie's the opposite of that. Jamie's the opposite. Of that. Karen's the opposite of right. that. There's some people out there that the more you get to know him, you actually like him more. Right. So I get why you two are together. My wife, people would see us together, and they'd be like, "Yeah, he has brainwashed her." 
she's prettier than him and smarter than him and nicer than him, WTF. Then they figure out who I am or what I am. They're, oh, yeah, it makes a little more sense. Large case of Stockholm Syndrome. Exactly. Is what exactly. They, what they expect. Yeah, they do. They expect there's definitely some daddy issues or something going on there. But I'm looking at nines, and I'm looking at fives, and that's what I'm doing. I'll see what Tom Brady would be if he wasn't Tom Brady. We're going to take a break. We're going to talk about the NFL. Come back. Get you ready to make some winners. Go to FatJackSports.com during the break. Get signed up and start winning. You're listening to Fat Jack Sports Hour. Passion on the best picks with BP Odds. Coming at you from Las Vegas. Hear from the experts as we break down the history and the storylines of the biggest games. Catch BP Odds right here. Beat the Odds, sponsored by Superbook Westgate, Las Vegas. Hey, it's Brandon Rush from the Fat Jack Sports Service. If you want to stay in touch with everything related to the Fat Jack, follow us on all the socials, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, TikTok, you name it. We are there at Fat Jack Sports. You can also watch the Fat Jack Sports Hour on YouTube every weekend. Plus, see funny clips from the show, see Jack's appearances on the nationally syndicated TV show Beat the Odds, and get primed for more profit every week with Bets and Breakfast, Sunday mornings at 9 a.m. only on YouTube. Stay connected to the Fat Jack at Fat Jack Sports on all the socials and on YouTube. Hey, this is the Fat Jack. Are you ready to make some money this week? We were 5-1 and one on Saturday, 4-1 and one on Sunday. Everybody is winning. Go to FatJackSports.com and sign up today. The Breeders' Cup plays are coming Saturday for free. Everybody is ready to win. College basketball starts next week. Go to FatJackSports.com and get winning selections. Text to your cell phone or email to you and start making money. It's time to stop losing today at FatJackSports.com. What you see is what you get. Go win today. Welcome back to the Fat Jack Sports Hour. And now here is our host, international matchmaker, the Fat Jack. Thank you so much, Brandon. Fat Jack Sports Hour, segment number two, nine and two last week. That's good for the service, good for the clients, bad for the listeners of the show. Because typically, when I do really well, I don't like to just sit here and just beat up the fact that we're killing it. Right. And everybody's making money. Because I feel a little bit like, ha, 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 I told you so. Type, And that's not what I'm trying to do. And there's only so much I can say before. If you're out there listening to the show and you don't get signed up, I, I, I don't know what you're doing. You're not betting enough or you're not betting or whatever. You're just here for the, the other stuff. But if you want to go, you know, nine and two once a month or so, which is about what we're averaging. Well, once in September, once in October, we're surrounding it with winning weeks. College football starts on Tuesday. Breeders' Cup uh, coming up this Saturday. Those plays are free if you get signed up. Go to FatJackSports.com, sign up today, and start winning. Um then, yeah, we're going to spend more time on things like Tom Brady's love life and what I don't like about Germany. You know, anybody that's been to Germany before? I have a friend that actually lived there. Uh, his uh, dad was uh, in the military and was stationed there, I want to say, for maybe two to three years. Uh, the dude loves a good schnitzel. Yeah, see, I don't, I don't, I don't love anything food-wise. I like some stuff okay. I, I don't mind the cabbage. Um, I like the... Uh, yeah, I like uh, that's the chicken or pork or whatever that's beat. It's the chicken out. fried chicken, essentially. Yeah, yeah I'm okay with that. Uh, there's some of okay, but there's not like I say, oh gosh, I can't wait for that. Like we go to other places in the world, and I, I really love some of the food. Not so I, I'm going to try to change that, and I definitely need to go into this with a better, a happier heart. I'm excited to be going, and I always win when we go overseas, so that's good. I almost know it's going to be a great week because if I'm overseas, we're winning. Uh, it's one of the reasons I, I want to get a boat or something over there because I just, when I'm overseas, we win, period. But I don't know that Germany is my thing because I'm just going in with this. I don't want to see anything having to do with the Holocaust. I, I really don't. It, it makes me sad. And I understand, especially with some of the BS going on, I, I just, I'm so sick of Kanye West. Golly, I just, what yeah. in the world? I it's, just, it's, it, it sucks too because like there's so much like, great music that he's produced that even like someone like myself i have a hard time separating art from artist he needs medication he needs a lot the dude needs medication he's he's just gone off the deep end he's he's about two chromosomes away from those moms that kill their kids because they think that the devil's take Mm taking over he's just so irrational about everything it's embarrassing that he continues to get a microphone. And you know that because even if you believe this stuff and you're halfway sane, you don't say it. You don't go on and tell Adidas, try to get rid of me. And they're like, okay. 
Now we did get ready. You know, so the guy needs medication. He really does. He is a, a testament to the, the uh, you know, mental health situation in this country because just because you know how to, you know, produce some music and make some hits and, and make some sneakers that the kids love doesn't mean that you have any business getting a microphone put in front of you unless you've got some medication. So his story is going to end badly. And and I feel it's going to be soon, unfortunately. I hope I'm wrong. I You know, we should pr- be praying for Kanye. I should be praying for Kanye. Because he is as is, is big an idiot as he is coming across right now. There's a level of idiocy that you don't enter into unless you are you are you need medication you have some mental problems and that's where he is and he doesn't scare me near as much as some of the people that i have met in my life that are, they hide it really well until mm-hmm. there's an opportunity for it to come out because those people are not crazy they're just wrong um kanye west needs help but um i'm gonna go to germany and try to fix everything for everybody it sounds like so um Fat Jack Sports, our segment number two. Let's get you signed up. Go to FatJackSports.com. Get signed up. Start winning. Enough is enough. College basketball is going to come. That is a typically very, very profitable time of the year, especially the first month or so. Um, Those plays are very inexpensive to add to your football. So right now, $4.99 through uh, the end of November, Mm. $5.99 football. So $100 gets you basketball added to your football pack. Which is obscene, honestly, because the number of of basketball selections, especially college football selections that win in November, traditionally is is very, very high. Basketball, you're right. And the only thing more obscene than that is the fact that I don't charge for the baseball. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's just, at this point, it's ridiculous. I mean, we're just year after year. We're on a, we're still on like a 20 and five run over the last two and a half weeks. And we're wrapping up the world series deep, deep in the problem. Nobody pays for that. When you sign up for the season and the year, you don't, you get that free, and basketball's not far behind. Twenty bucks. If you can't afford twenty, twenty-five bucks a week, don't gamble at all on anything. All right. As a matter of fact, wear two seat belts when you get in the car <laughs> because you don't want to gamble with your life. You can't afford twenty, twenty-five bucks in your betting or thinking about betting. You should not be gambling on anything. No jaywalking. By the way, I was reading on, or my wife was reading on Germany. They really frown upon jaywalking, which is bad for me because I jaywalk pretty much everywhere. See, I am the polar opposite. I am. I don't know if it was just drilled into me as a kid or if there's something wiring wise. that's just like, no, you don't cross the street here. You cross the street here. And I get very, uh, I can't say upset, but I do get kind of judgmental about people that, that jaywalk in front of me at, at stoplights it's, or, or wherever. It's really weird. I'm Frogger. <laughs> okay so that makes that makes sense i'm out there just You're out of your generation jump yeah i'm frogging it up frogger jump in front of the car jump around jump back try not to get run over it's more yeah I'm, it's a total gamble it, it, it works with my with my brand um i typically don't disrupt traffic but if i see a, a cupcake store on the other side of the street there's a beeline happening it's not gonna be an l or a u typically it's just i gotta get a cupcake now five seconds ago all right let's look at the nfl the Public did not do horrible if they just stayed at the top. Last mm-hmm. week's most bet games, Miami, Green Bay, and Jacksonville. And Jacksonville is one of those, if it wasn't in London last week, it probably it probably wasn't. But people like to get out early. and, and yep. Because nobody's – Jacksonville right now is so bad against the spread, Brandon. They are not good. Um, the, Trevor Lawrence, period, is 0-5 straight up as a favorite. 0-5 as a – favorite against the spread obviously because he didn't win any of those overall he's five and 20 straight up and seven and 18 against the spread Mm. so let's not act like there's a huge difference between trevor lawrence and uh wilson from the jets and it's funny how we just the perception we just think trevor lawrence should be better but trevor lawrence is not better yeah and i think that perception from all the success that he had in college has carried over and benefited um or at least influence the the line makers ideas, yeah. ideas of what he is and what that team could be. Sharps love Jacksonville. They do. Now, I didn't release Jacksonville because I only wanted to play winners on Sunday. <laughs> and the only thing we lost was a total in the Rams uh, San Francisco game. And which that was a barely type of type of situation. Should have been Operation Clean Sweep, which I love the uh the emojis with the sweeper. So I was a little disappointed we lost that. But yeah, so Jacksonville's one of those that it was the most bet game on uh tickets, then Miami, then Green Bay. So Miami, Green Bay both won uh as far as tickets. Money wise, 
It was Jacksonville first. They lost, obviously. Then New England, then Miami, both of those ones. So general public didn't do bad. The problem is the general public probably then got a little deeper. Um, I don't think they did bad overall. They had probably had Dallas. They definitely probably had um, Green Bay. A lot of people had a reason to, you know, play Green Bay plus all those points. So it wasn't a horrible week for the uh, for the public. And uh, you know, teams like Pittsburgh that have been good as an underdog weren't good as an underdog. Mm-hmm. So uh, you had some of that. And I didn't really see that either. So you had some of that going on. Uh, what's game? What games jumps out at this week, Brandon? Uh, on the on the NFL slates, I. Chargers Falcons at least will be entertaining. Seahawks Cardinals is going to be an interesting one to uh, to handicap because uh, there uh, there's that we talk about the bump that Trevor Lawrence gets from from bookmakers. Are are Geno Smith and the Seahawks not getting that because of what Geno's done in the NFL, or is, is that just a team uh, that's such an enigma that they're confusing everybody? Yeah, you you can't make any money if you're trying to get value playing Philadelphia, mm. playing Buffalo. Um, playing Kansas City, you're not going to get any value. But there are some teams, to your point, that we can still kind of get out in front of the curve because the markets have caught up with those teams. Um, the Seattle, the Seattle is absolutely one of those teams. Arizona also, uh, you know, been so inconsistent. And the reality is, both of these teams are horrible defensively. Mm-hmm. Seattle has the 28th ranked defense in total defense in the league. Uh, Arizona is 31. So neither of these teams stop anybody, and they also can score. So the the play in that game is definitely, in my opinion, over the 49 and a half or so. Seattle's four and one against the spread their last five. We had Seattle this last week. They covered again. But this is one of those games. And over the next two or three weeks, we will identify these spots where what we've seen we think will continue at least through the month of November before the market catches up. And one of the ways to do that, we'll talk about this on the TV show this week, are fine teams that have been consistently good or consistently bad at something for an entire month. And defensively is where you start. Teams that consistently can't stop anybody but are but are winning some games and scoring some points, you're going to look over with those teams, teams like Seattle, teams like Arizona, um, at the bottom there uh, defensively. The other way is go to the other extreme of that and find the teams that are good Oh, by another another bad defensive team are, are the game are the Chargers and Atlanta. Mm-hmm. We talked about that. Thirtieth in total defense for Atlanta, twenty fifth in total defense for the Chargers. So those two games, we're going to look over until they start running together some more uh, some more streaks that have them playing better consistently on the defense side of the ball. The other side of that are when we get teams like the Giants, Tampa Bay, and Denver and Indianapolis to play better offense their their auto underplays now the now the outlier to that is buffalo buffalo 1 and 6 to the under but they are one of those teams that's very really hard to play against on the under because the offense you know can score at will but the reality is they're very comfortable um playing lower scoring games because they understand that keeps their defense fresh and their offense can score almost at will and they have to take fewer chances when they do that so teams like the giants tampa bay Denver, Indianapolis, they're going to be auto underplays, especially when they're playing each other. This is the time of year you find those teams playing each other, and you either play over or you play under. So Indy, New England is one. That's yeah, one. I don't know if you can set that total low enough. Yeah, it's 39 and a half. It's definitely going to work down. Um, Indianapolis, 7-1 and one to the under their last eight games. And more importantly, they're 12-1 and one to the under their last 13 games. This team will not go over, doesn't care to go over, cannot – open it up. Now they're getting injuries. They This is a absolute, we're going to score 16 points, see if you can beat us. And, and, and now a, a rookie quarterback at the behind center. Exactly. And New England is similar to that. New England doesn't, they're not going to put a lot of chances in their quarterback situation because they don't trust it. Belichick doesn't trust either one of those kids. And so look for games like that to go under. So you got three different angles in the, this is normally something we would hold off for the, uh, the podcast version. Sure. Where we're given angles and given some more insight on how you how you just generally get on a path toward winners. That's that's all I'm. If you're not going to sign up, and you you're just say you know what I'm okay losing. <laughs> I'm not going to sign up because I I just prefer to lose. I know he wins, but I want to lose. If that's you, the very minimum I can do to reward you for listening to the show are give you just some general things to apply. Now this different set of uh, circumstances will not work going forward but for the next month or so 
find those games, games where top five or top seven defenses that are good are playing each other and go under. The bottom five to bottom seven or eight defenses are playing each other go over until further notice. Things will, will regress to the mean, but when two bad teams defensively are playing each other, there's going to be points out of somebody most of the time, and sometimes that'll offset even a better defensive performance out of the other team and vice versa. So Detroit-Miami last week, a, a prime example of that. Exactly. Well, they have 80. Yeah. I mean, those two those teams do not play good defense, and the, the game went shooting over the total. So there will be more of those each week over the next two or three weeks. Identify those and play those. Go to FatJackSports.com if you don't want to have to mess with that, and you actually want to win for less than 100 bucks a week. You can find these angles and trends. You can do your best and then play your favorite teams and lose, or you can go get signed up at FatJackSports.com and start winning. It's totally up to you. So, But the three winners, three winners in this segment alone, mm. I mean, you don't get that all the time, are, who are they? They are the under in the Chargers-Atlanta game, the under in the New England Indy game, no, sorry, the over in the Chargers-Atlanta game, over Chargers-Atlanta, under New England Indy, and over Seattle-Arizona. Seattle, Arizona. There you go. That's three. Do we need to take a break? How are we doing? We do. We need to get one in because we got some uh, big time college football games to talk about this week. So much. We haven't touched on Tennessee. We haven't touched on Alabama. We haven't touched on. You know, there's a bunch of good games going this weekend in the you know, in college football. So we're going to get to all of those. Get you another free winner and get you ready to make some money at Fat Jack Sports. Um, hey, this is the Fat Jack. Are you ready to make some money this week? We were five and one on Saturday, four and one on Sunday. Everybody is winning. Go to FatJackSports.com and sign up today. The Breeders' Cup plays are coming Saturday for free. Everybody is ready to win. College basketball starts next week. Go to FatJackSports.com and get winning selections. Text to your cell phone or email to you and start making money. It's time to stop losing today at FatJackSports.com. What you see is what you get. Go win today. If you are looking for more action this week, Prize Picks is daily fantasy made easy. With multi-sport prop entries, you can mix and match your action every day from almost anywhere in the country. Sign up with promo code FATJACK and get a 100% deposit bonus up to $100. That's $100 when you sign up with promo code FATJACK. Go to prizepicks.com or download the app and sign up with promo code FATJACK to get in on the action today. Welcome back to the Fat Jack Sports Hour. For the final time today, here is our host, a man helping you fall back into profit. He is the Fat Jack. For the last time, we have to fall back. In 10 years, nobody will be saying fall back. It'll be one of those things where, yeah, 10 years from now, someone's going to mention, hey, remember when we used to do daylight savings time? And then like some teenager is going to be like, oh, my God, you're so old. Isn't that about the same time that everybody locked themselves in the house for a year and a half and thought the disease was killed? That's what's going to be. This whole period is going to be just an absolute it's, SHIT it's, it's a, show. It's, it's the middle. Um, it's it's our generation's dark ages. It really is. I mean, there, there won't be enough. You'll have classes taught in college or high school about literally the last five years, including coming up. And, and it probably will include the expansion of the, of the college football playoff. And depending on who you who uh, who ends up winning elections on Tuesday, I mean, some of that might not even be taught at all. But people, uh, please, just just please, please, please act normal after the election. Just please act normal. That's my that's my public service now. Act normal. Nobody's rigging anything. Is this uh, nobody? Just act normal. That's what I'm I'm imploring people after the election. Just act normal. All right. That's my public service announcement. Um. I'm going to be in, in uh, Munich during the games this weekend on college, but I'll be watching them. I have an app that gets me all the all the TV stations I get here at home. But I, there, there's going to be some great games to watch on Saturday, especially if you're in the middle of the country. Oh, wow. Oklahoma State, Kansas, I, that fires me up. And wh- How many times would I say that? That is a great game. Oklahoma opens. Oh, excuse, Oklahoma State opens six-point favorite down to two-and-a-half-point favorite at Kansas. That's, That's a probably lot of gonna, movement quickly. A lot of oh, – Joe probably jumped on them. They're not buying the Mike Gundy uh, speech that we didn't practice well. They don't care about that. Mm. Um, Georgia opens up eight and a half point favor, or excuse me, twelve and a half point favorite against Tennessee. Now down to eight and a half. Mm. Joe Public, I mean the Sharps jumping on the Vols. Can they win? I, I don't know. I don't know that it matters. I mean, it, it, if they lose, they still are in the top five, four to me. And if anybody puts them outside that, that's going to be next week's show. I'm going to be in Germany or wherever I am taping this show. 
sleep deprived <laughs> and very irritated about um actually no I'll be back right when I'm trying to think when this runs uh no no I'll be I'll be over there I will be over there um but another great one so a couple of great games of those of all the games going on Saturday Brandon what do you like the most I mean Alabama LSU is is an, a, a great game I feel like Alabama double digit favorite on the road um I think that is is a tricky spot because Alabama when they're double digit favorites in conference, regardless of who they're playing, it usually seems to just put them away. Uh, but LSU at night, not exactly uh, many teams are able to go in there and come away with wins. Yeah, it's easy to kind of speculate. Like if I was doing a show in the middle of the SEC, I'd say, yeah, Alabama will do what they always do. 10 and 1 their last 11 games playing LSU. Um, just take, they take care of business. But going up and putting any substantial amount of money on it, mm -hmm. it'd make you a little bit nervous, right? Absolutely. Um, I mean, Kansas, I Kansas State host in Texas, same deal. That's that's like a two and a half point line. I, I love that game. It's a big Saturday. I may not be out eating Wiener Schnitzel on Saturday. I may just find a spot in the hotel room and watch TV because Clemson um, at Notre Dame. Yeah, and Notre, Notre Dame, one of our plays last week against Syracuse. I love what Syracuse is doing. I just they were just outmatched in a bad spot, honestly. Bad, yeah. Um, Really bad spot. So a lot of parody in college football. I love it, and I am blaming the transfer portal on this. I've just I thought more about it last and week. The, you were praising the, the transfer portal. No, I know that's I'm st I'm still doing that. Okay. that's what I mean. I'm blaming uh, the parody in the league. I'm blaming on the transfer portal, which is a good thing. I love the parody, and it's absolutely because of that. Guys that that were recruited by somebody that thought they were the best mm -hmm. ended up they weren't the best. They went the transfer portal, and now they're starting for somebody else. It's created more parody. It's that whole thing. You don't want all the great players going to the great teams. Well, this allows guys to get a do-over. They were told they were great their whole life. They thought they were the best. Now they know they can't start for Georgia or Alabama, but they can start for Kansas State or Kansas, which is making those teams better, bringing in more parity. Um, I think I'm for the transfer report. It's very irritating, gives you a headache, especially when you are a fan of a team. But overall, for college football, I don't think it's the worst thing we've ever done because a lot of these different players, Brandon, we're seeing this up and down, especially at quarterback, they're highlighted a lot. The guys that are, are so well-traveled, all right, and I understand loyalty is a good thing and all those things, but the reality is I would rather have a kid starting for West Virginia that couldn't start at Georgia than having him be a backup for Georgia, especially if I'm a West Virginia fan. So I, I want the opportunity to get the best players even if at first uh, decision-making time, they didn't choose me. And I think that's probably what you're getting. So it is bringing up to me as far as who's able to compete at that level. Um, what do you think about Tennessee, Georgia? Let's talk about that. Tennessee down to an eight and a, point, a half point underdog at Georgia. Georgia has been incredibly good again defensively, uh, but their offense has also been playing very, very well. This is a mm -hmm. huge step up of competition for them. What are your thoughts on this game? The, the, the way that Tennessee functions, doesn't I don't think match mesh or mesh well with what Georgia wants to do defensively from a game plan. They want to pin their ears back, get offenses into predictable situations, and then you know just unleash a, an a, an ungodly front seven on on a below average offensive line. Tennessee, while at times having issues protecting the quarterback, likes I feel to play a little bit off schedule. They're not flustered if they get into a, a second and twelve, a third and fifteen. They they're able to get the chunks that they need to get themselves in manageable situations to get first downs. And that kind of frustrates teams like Georgia who are so used to just being the, the dictating the tempo on the defensive side of the ball. I don't think they have that opportunity. Uh, Hendon hooker is, is, is a heck of a quarterback. I'm very excited to see what Tennessee does uh, between the hedges. Cause I think they have a, a darn good chance to go in there and win. Now, if they lose, I hope that it's not a loss that beats them twice. And then that they, don't end up in say a playoff or a New Year's Day six bowl. They need if they just lose this one, they need to be in the playoff for sure. If, yeah. if they if they win out, obviously, and and uh, even if they don't play in the the championship game, yes. they, in my opinion, they need to be in the playoff. Um, Tennessee seven and one against the spread their last eight games. Um, th this is that old battle that we talk about for years, and typically it's a a, a Big Twelve team coming into the playoff playing an SEC team. Everything that you highlighted about Tennessee is 100% accurate. If they're able to stay on the field, mm -hmm. convert some third down, 
get the ball in the end zone, make Georgia play more up-tempo, at least having to answer or respond because they're at least worried about Tennessee and can't just run it into the line of scrimmage and play field position until they get the lead. But that's the old adage in these games. If Tennessee is in the game into the third quarter, they, they have a shot. If they get down two or three scores where Georgia can then impose their will offensively and keep Tennessee on the sidelines, that defense gets really tired. We've seen that here in the Midwest a bunch with some really good offensive teams. The difference here is Tennessee's defense is no slouch. Mm-hmm. They've got some players, and they're they're getting the job done defensively. Georgia, they, they live in a world where they're okay going three and out and playing defense, but against Tennessee, that can get you in a ton of trouble. Georgia on the other side, if Tennessee gets up 10 points Mm. because they get a couple of stops, what does that offense look like for Georgia? That's way out of their comfort zone. To your your point, Tennessee's much more able to function in a world where they got down a little bit or up a little bit, at least until their defense gets tired. So it keeps them around a lot longer, especially because their defense is probably going to get some stops. Uh, The game of the week to watch, not the game of the week to bet on. If you're going to bet it, I would play under the total in this one because I do think there will be fewer points. I do think Georgia's number one thing is let's keep Tennessee. They're not going to get in a shootout. And just like we talk about with Buffalo or some of these NFL teams, Kansas City at times that have great offenses, one of the ways you 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 play good defense is with your offense mm-hmm. and you keep your offense on the field. That will be uh, priority one with Georgia is to run the ball effectively time of possession win, uh, keep Tennessee's offense on the sidelines. So I this is not a game I bet on. I lean toward Tennessee, Tennessee plus the plus points because I do think the back door is open, but a better play on the under. I'm not going to release either side, but that would be where I'd go with this one, under and uh, lean toward the balls. 800-298-1383. Go to fatjacksports.com, especially this week. First of November is going to be a great, great weekend. Breeders' Cup is on Saturday. If you're listening to this show Friday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday morning. It is not too late. Sign up right now. You'll get the Breeders' Cup emailed and text to you all the races, the best selections. Go bet those plays. We've won 30000 before, 20000 before. Uh, most of the time, we win money. Uh, the long shots, uh, you know, they run supreme when you're talking about the Breeders' Cup. And then tomorrow or this weekend is not going to be any different, and we're going to have some of those. So go get signed up. You get those free. If you only want to play the Breeders' Cup, go 99 bucks to the website. Go to the package page. Scroll to the bottom, sign up for the Breeders' Cup. You'll get those plays instantly to your email, and you'll be ready to roll for Saturday's action. Uh, thank you for joining us on the podcast. If you're out there listening around the country, uh, we appreciate that. You get early information. You get more information. Um, also, you get the inside track to tuning into the bets and breakfast that Brandon does on Sunday mornings. How's that going, Brandon? Uh, we had a, a 4-0 in week six and then uh, pushes the last two weeks. But overall, through uh, two months of the NFL season, um, about 10 picks above 500 right now. We're not charging for it, so people are being rewarded just simply for tuning into that. Uh, don't don't get too comfortable with that. We may start charging in the future. Mm-hmm. But for now, bets and breakfast will yeah. get you into more profit, so go check it out. before Free, you... free on YouTube every Sunday morning. Free on YouTube, so go check it out, and uh, definitely download the podcast to show if you haven't already. If you're listening to this, you probably have. Brandon, two winners each. Let's get them going. Upset alert in the SEC. Double digit. Liberty goes into Fayetteville. This is an offense uh, with Hugh Freeze that uh, can absolutely pick apart a, uh, a a defense that – pretty much any defense, but Arkansas – stylistically I don't think can match up or keep up with with Liberty and I would not be surprised to see Arkansas maybe get an early lead and then blow it late I think I think Liberty plus 13 and a half uh goes into Fayetteville and pulls off a stunner definitely a difficult spot for Arkansas they've had a really tough schedule they're a lot to deal with that quarterback is next level difficult to deal mm-hmm. with so um but yeah I mean this is definitely a flat spot and Bigger, bigger upsets have certainly happened, so it's definitely not out of the realm of possibility. Let's look at Carolina-Cincinnati. Uh, Carolina has been uh, good in the series. They've covered four of the last six, or 4-1-1 one, and one against the spread their last six. Cincinnati, 6-1 and one against the spread their last seven at home. Uh, as you said, Carolina has been a team that's a couple of plays away from uh, really getting some stuff done and really doing some damage. Uh, but uh, And I don't really blame the, the kid for taking his helmet off. I thought it was a stupid call. I understand it's the rule. And you can't do it, but honestly, the field goal kicker was probably going to miss the extra point anyway. He showed that he was totally 
lost and had the yip. So, um, but they are a formidable opponent. I do think this is a little bit of a letdown spot, though. Even with the injury receiver for Cincinnati, go ahead and lay the eight, eight and a half, and play Cincinnati. All right, uh, Bill Belichick, thirteen and zero against rookie quarterbacks. Sam Ellinger, I don't believe was was a great college quarterback. I don't think he's going to be a good NFL quarterback. And against a uh, a coach that knows how to scheme against rookies, going to confuse the heck out of them. Patriots at home minus the five and a half against the Colts on Sunday. Yeah, we saw this last last week with Belichick. Also, he's just he's so predictable in some spots, like mm-hmm. him or not. Mm-hmm. I mean, he gets bad yes, quarterbacks. He the guy knows what he's doing. He played the Jets last week and just methodically picked them apart. This is not as tough a spot for him. So you're probably right about that. Also under, uh, that's going to be my second one in that New England Indy game. Go under the total. You have Indy that's gone under 12 of their last 13 games. All right. It's not just them as a team total. Their games, 12 or 13, have gone under. New England is certainly not the remedy or cure for going under consistently. So um, they're not going to score a bunch of points because they simply don't have to. So look for that thing to go under the total at your second free winner. Guys, thank you for joining us. Enjoy your weekend. Gamble safe. Uh, wager responsibly. And uh, we will talk to you next week for the Fat Jack Sports Hour. Hey, this is the Fat Jack. Are you ready to make some money this week? We were 5-1 and one on Saturday, 4-1 and one on Sunday. Everybody is winning. Go to FatJackSports.com and sign up today. The Breeders' Cup plays are coming Saturday for free. Everybody is ready to win. College basketball starts next week. Go to FatJackSports.com and get winning selections. Text to your cell phone or email to you and start making money. It's time to stop losing today at FatJackSports.com. What you see is what you get. Go win today.